I really love Hitman Codename 47. I need to use the bathroom. Okay, so I love it, but I don't love all of it. It's a pretty damn goofy first entry for a series this long running. Whenever you see people talk about IO Interactive's debut title, they're often quick to talk about how it's not a great game or particularly worth playing compared to its sequel, or how it's Eurojank as all hell. And while it's definitely a Eurojank game, I don't think it's as Eurojank as something like Stalker. I want to go home. Home. Don't shoot. Please. <laughs> To me, Codename 47 represents the era it came out in. It's not just Eurojank, because there's still a lot of Eurojank games made today. Codename 47 is dirty. That's that dirty. That's that dirty. Alright, so dirty is some esoteric nonsense that I straight up made up, but I think it makes sense. Hear me out. The dirty era lasted from 97 to 02 on Dreamcast and PC. Basically, dirty games are games that were introducing new concepts, reinvigorating old genres, as well as pushing and taking advantage of technology that wasn't available on the consoles of the 5th gen. The N64 and especially the PS1 definitely had a lot of landmark titles released for them, but dirty was something that was going on specifically on platforms with more advanced specs. Some of the best games of all time are dirty, so dirty does not mean bad. It just means the shit's dirty. Like you look at the graphics, the HUD, the presentation, and you say, oh, that's that dirty. A handful of dirty games would get ported to the PS2 and Xbox eventually, and since the PS2 was around during the sunset of the dirty era, another chunk of dirty games would actually launch on the console too. But since the dirty era really died with the Dreamcast in 2002, most of these dirty games that actually launched on PS2 rather than get ported, I like to call leftovers. So now that we've established that, Hitman. Goddamn 47. Man, I don't even know where to start with this damn game. From the moment the tutorial opens and you realize that walk and run are mapped to two separate buttons and not a toggle, you remember what year this game was made in. But once you get accustomed to the slightly tanky movement, things start going a lot smoother. Then something special happens. You get hit with the first guard and hear his goddamn accent. This is supposed to be in Romania and this is how he sounds. Bruh. Honestly, voice acting like this is a core pillar of Dirty. Almost all of the Dirty Legends have some great but goofy ass acting in them. And this moment right here marks the true start of Codename 47 showing its hand that it's the dirtiest game that's ever been created. And this is only reinforced when the actual levels start. The first chunk of levels is set in Hong Kong. And after a pretty tight narration from Agent 47... Ah, so this is Hong Kong. People talk of it as an interesting place. Filled with mystery, laughs, and excitement, they say. Not really my scene. You're greeted with your loadout screen, and the music. Jesper Kid composed the soundtrack, and man, this loadout screen. Starting off chill and mysterious, you really feel like an armed assassin gearing up to take out your target. And then, the beat switch happens. The greatest beat switch since Hamoud Habibi. Jesper Kid, you're a goddamn genius. I don't know how this track didn't stay around as the main theme for the whole series. Anyway, once the three Hong Kong missions get going, you start to see just how impressive this game was. Ragdoll physics that function most of the time, cloth and environmental physics, and physics on pieces of clothing before they break and just stand still in thin air, and real-time reflections. Though, I'll admit, visually this game hasn't aged too well like many dirty games. I told you, it's that dirty. It's got that dirty look to it, where it's trying to have an art style of its own, but also attempting to juggle realism. Then you have dirty games like Oni and Shogo with their fake-ass anime look. Might as well call games like this Kappa Mikey Core. Hitman obviously ain't that, but it's closer to the group that tries to be realistic. Though some of these character models, man, throughout the whole game, Jesus Christ. Another dirty-ass aspect that you notice in these opening levels is the fucking skybox. Ooh, that goddamn Liberty Island looking skybox. That Spider-Man PS1 ass skybox. I know Spider-Man PS1 isn't a dirty game, but it's got a dirty skybox. I kind of broke my own rules there, but I don't care. You get what I mean. You're also going to notice in these early levels that being stealthy doesn't really work in this stealth game, but you can't really blame Io for this, because the game was originally supposed to be a shooter before changing course midway through development, but it's honestly hilarious how flimsy the series famous disguise system is in its first entry. Guards will just kind of see through your disguise sometimes. Something is wrong. That is not the driver. This guy is loaded. <laughs> and then sometimes they won't know any better. The game has no consistent rules about its system, so you just kind of have to wing it and hope you don't die. And you're gonna die a lot, because Agent 47 is made of cardboard in this game. Get ready to see this screen a lot. Also, there's no saving in missions, there's just checkpoints, but the alert state will still exist after you respawn in these checkpoints, so you're kind of screwed either way. You just have to get it right on one shot. Another thing you'll notice in between levels here early in the game is these loading screens. 
Oh my god, these loading screens. I love them so much. They are so dirty. Look at Agent 47's face. Look at it. What the fuck, man? And look at this one here from later in the game. What is happening? And this one. This looks like a strike in an M-rated bowling game. I love this. It's so goddamn dirty. Everything about these loading screens is funny. And some of them are just creepy, Jesus Christ. The original render for this game too was also terrifying, I'm so glad they didn't go with this. But what they did go with as the main renders for the final game are very funny. Look at this, 47 has an eye on each gun. That's how you can tell he's a goddamn pro. I don't want to talk about everything in each of the Hong Kong levels, so I'll mention cool aspects of each. The first sniper mission is pretty neat and standard. You know, you snipe this guy. <laughs> and this helicopter pulls up, bro. <laughs> The second mission where you have to plant a bomb in a limousine is pretty tight. This is also the mission where you realize that the fiber wire is absolutely useless. I'll explain that in a bit. The third mission is a bit of a mess. You have to plant this talisman on the floor in the bathroom and kill the police chief. Uh, it's bad. It's not good. And there's not much of a sense of direction here. And that lack of direction only gets worse in the fourth and final Hong Kong mission. The Lee Hong assassination is a really cool concept, hitting Lee Hong's base directly, but there's some bullshit in this. There's an escort mission, and you have to save an American agent from captivity, but this guard in front of the door is not having it. Restricted. And there is no way around him, except for if you sneak behind him in perfect timing and knife him. And this is what I mean by the fiber wire being useless. The fiber wire is the slowest shit in the world, but the knife is just instant. Pow, they're dead. Stuff like this, where you have to to finesse your way around guards carefully that's consistent for the whole game it means you're gonna get caught a lot. So get used to this sound hey. and get used to this voice clip. This guy is loaded. This guy is loaded. And that's only for the Hong Kong levels, because once you finish those, the Columbia levels start. So first off, the Columbia levels begin with this. Columbia. From what I heard, even the butterflies are corrupt and smuggling drugs. Now, let's get this show running. Which way is south? 47, what is wrong with you? Then for the first level, you just have to kind of run around the forest and check the map on occasion to make sure you're going to the right location. Visit this native village and... Oh, you have found golden statue. Very nice. Please bring it to our chief in the village. IO Interactive. This was not it. This definitely ain't it. Then you have to run back to save this dude, so I actually like killing the guards here first. But it's almost not worth it, because this level is just a shooter. You're gonna die so often. You're gonna see this statue pointing in this direction so often, you're just gonna get pissed off. This level sucks. This level is terrible. But the next level has an even more absurd concept, and I don't even know why it's in a game that's supposed to be stealth. It's a two minute level. You have to avoid a goddamn jaguar. Just run past it though. Some people say it'll kill you right away, but it won't. Just finesse that shit. Just run. Run. You'll get past it. This is where it becomes obvious that the game was supposed to be a shooter at first. These levels suck. Also, the game's non-existent draw distance, which you can fix with patches on a new system, but I decided to keep. If there isn't a crazy amount of popping and fog, it ain't a dirty game. You gotta feel like you're walking down Dubuida Street about to hit up Tom. Hey, Rio! Oh, Mystic Ruins ass levels. But the third and final Columbia level is so funny. Okay, so you can just snipe your target from here, right? Alright, problem solved, but you still have to get the bomb he has and plant it in a chemical base to blow it up. So, what I like doing is going into his house, killing every single guard because this game doesn't penalize you for killing and then walking up to him for the funniest boss fight of all time Hola, Hancho. say hello to my little friend i'm stronger than you amigo i feel no pain don't you have anything bigger maricon come on show me you got cojones why you bring that little pop gun to a shooting game? You gonna lose, muchacho. Like a babe in the woods, huh? Come to papa. You're on my home ground now, and we're not even in the same league. I'm gonna club you like a piñata, dump you in the river, and watch the piranhas rip you apart. You son of a puta! You think you can match me, huh? That shit is so goddamn funny. And then when you gotta plant the bomb, you just- look at- look what happens here. Okay, so I don't want you to come in. Guess what? Just walk slowly. It works. <laughs> what the fuck? After Columbia comes the best level in the game, though. Traditions of the Trade. This level is awesome. Tons of ways to take out your targets. The disguise system actually functioning properly. The fiber wire actually being kind of a cool item to use. 
a level with an intricate and solid layout that almost feels like a real location. This is the only level in the game that feels like it came out of the later entries in the series. It's great. This is the only level in the game that you can have fun 100% stealthing. Well, up until the end, where you have to take this briefcase and run it through the scanners, they're gonna go off and the cops are gonna while out and you have to exit like this. <laughs> This game rocks. I like to think that the DNA of this level is what led to the rest of the series, because it's really the only level that still feels like it fits in with the rest of the Hitman franchise. Then you hit up the Rotterdam levels, and these are the dirtiest levels in the game. The moment I hit these docks, I couldn't believe this shit. Then for the actual mission, you have to place a tracker on a car and follow it to one of four random meetup locations. Now, once you hit these meetup locations, the car is going to clip through the gate. You can't pass that, and then these dogs right here will clip through the gate and try to get you. Why can't I get past the gate? Well, it's because you have to reroute a train that's in the level to break open the gate. So enemies can clip through it, but you can't. Then you break into the damn base and you shoot it up, kill everybody there. Then you gotta wait for the client you have to give the briefcase to, and when he shows up, uh... Uh... Oh my god. So then this Jamiroquai ass looking motherfucker walks into the base and you hand him the briefcase. He's not even paying attention to all the dead bodies spread about, he doesn't care. And then he runs off, gets back in his car, and clips back through the gate. This is the dirtiest level in the game, for this reason. Every single dirty game has at least one aspect that's goddamn broken. Like that one level in Thief where the Hammerite AI just isn't working so you can walk right up to him and bonk him in the face. That's honestly what this mission reminds me of. In the other Rotterdam mission, you're supposed to disarm a nuke that's on a boat while also assassinating your target. But all the gates in the surrounding area require a password. If you don't have the password and try to run through the gate, you'll just die. So how do you get the password? You don't. What you do is squeeze right up next to another guard, and as he's saying the password, just keep squeezing. Keep squeezing and walk with him through the gate and you'll be fine. At this point I had just accepted this game's lack of rules, because this honestly made sense to me the first time I played it. My brain had melted. So once you actually get onto the boat, you could just sneak onto it with a disguise and pray for the best. And this is how I played it the first few times I played this game, but on this playthrough, I honestly just looked up what the easiest solution was. And that's to stand at the base of the boat stairs and just shoot. Just keep shooting. It works. Then go disarm the bomb and take the boat. The last two missions have you going back to the hospital from the tutorial. I know that I've neglected to address the story at this point, but that's because there really isn't much of one in this game. Basically, Agent 47 is a clone. The 47th one, duh. And it turns out the four men you've assassinated throughout the game are actually four of your five fathers. Dr. Ortmeier is the person talking to you in the tutorial. He's also your fifth father and your creator. Basically, this return to the hospital is a setup by Ortmeier to get you killed by SWAT team. And the level is just kind of a goose chase around the hospital trying to avoid SWAT team and finding where Ortmeier is. I appreciate the idea of the hospital being kind of a creepy maze-like setting, but it's honestly too big for its own good and it doesn't really work. It's more tedious to navigate the place than anything else. Then you get to the final level where you have to kill all the other clones and it's just a shootout. I hate this level, so honestly the best way to get through it is to cheese it. Find the minigun, stand in the corner where you get the minigun, treat all the clones like fish in a barrel, boom. Then you go to Ortmeier and shoot him. Game done. There isn't really much story to be discussed in Codename 47. It's not what the game's focus is in the first place. But you know what the game does want you to look at? The weird ass expressions on the clones' faces. And this is about my eighth playthrough of the game, so as the credits rolled I really reflected, do I like this game? Yeah. I love it. It's the pinnacle of dirty. Half of its mechanics don't work, it's got garish visuals, ridiculous voice acting, there's only a few legitimately well-designed levels, and it plays more like a shooter than an assassination simulator. But you know what? Every series has to start somewhere. And Codename 47 is such a funny game that I can't help but love it. To me, the very spirit of Dirty is trying new things. Whether you succeed or fail doesn't really matter. Some Dirty games knocked it out of the park and some were like Codename 47. But 47's impressive tech and attempt to do something new is what put it ahead of the pack when it came out in 2000. To me, it really is the dirtiest game in existence because such a great franchise was built off of it. Looking at IO Interactive now and how absolutely incredible Hitman 2 is really makes you proud as a fan of this series. It's not the greatest game, but it's honestly got a lot of heart, and I love it. And even on your Steam list when you go look at that, it still somehow finds its way to sneak right in the middle, where it should be. Always reminding you that it's the first, and you gotta respect the classic. And to leave this video off, I've got one more question. What are empires built on? They're built on dirt. Hey, thanks for watching my second video. It's probably not as good as the first one, maybe it's better, who knows, that's up to you. Anyway, thanks for watching this. If you want, hit subscribe. I've got my biggest video yet planned for December. It's gonna be extremely different and a very serious video. It's on a topic that I hold really close to my heart. It's still gonna have humor in it, don't worry, but it's definitely gonna be a special one for me. And I'd really appreciate if you could share this video and the channel in general around too. I'm just trying to get started, nothing huge yet. That said, I'm gonna keep trying to make videos and experimenting. I hope you'll stick around for that. And thanks for watching, it really does mean a lot. See you next time on December 17th, cause that day will hopefully have my best video yet. Subscribe and follow me on Twitter for updates and other foolishness.